Creepers. Punk's not dead. That's right. Punk is not dead here in Portland. And today we are in a really special place that brings back a ton of memories for me. I basically frequented this establishment many of occasions in the late 90s. This is the Pine Street Theater, better known to most Portlanders as La Luna. But back in its heyday, this hosted some of the most famous bands. Not so much famous when they played here, but not too far from playing a little venue like this. Right through those doors is where we would have entered to buy our tickets. And my buddy Andy at the time had a big Cadillac. We would pull right up to the front here. And we came to see a ton of bands. Right up top there you could have sat down and watched the show. Or you could have actually went down to the actual dance floor. Right through those doors. And moshed or scawed or skanked your way to happiness. This is the La Luna. Well... First called the Pine Street Theater, but to me it will always be known as La Luna. And many of famous, uh, famous musicians played right through those doors. So located right here on the corner of Southeast 9th Avenue and Southeast Pine Street, this was previously known as 9th Street Exit in the 1970s. And then the Pine Street Theater from 1980 to 1991. Um... But back from the 92 through 1999, it was a very famous club here. Bands like Nirvana, Rage Against the Machine, The Dandy Warhols, Elliott Smith, Sweaty Nipples, Everclear, Sublime, Cherry Pop and Daddies, Gutter Mouth, you name it, they played here. And being a smaller venue was really cool because you could actually buy a ticket, all-age ticket, and you could find a seat kind of up in the rafters or you could actually go down onto the main floor a lot of the people that I knew would buy a ticket and just kind of kind of dance or skank or ska down on the main dance floor and back then if you if you did that people would uh, it was it was pretty rowdy but people were still pretty cool the punk rock scene um, everybody that was involved with the shows or went to the shows if you fell or something in the pit they would pick you up. I'm not sure if that style changed over the years, but when I went to the shows here, they were pretty fun. They were they were really fun. They were pretty rowdy, I should say, um, but it was never unsafe, and that's one thing that I think La Luna here um, did a great job for. And I, I, I believe, too, when it was the Pine Street, it was an all-age venue as well. Like I said, this was a very famous... Uh, and it still is got a lot of historical musicians that had played here through yep many of good memories here I loved coming here in fact it was kind of like a getaway me and my buddies would like I said jump in his big Cadillac and cruise down here and we would sometimes come even like an hour or two before the show just to kind of hang out <laughs> and just be kids really uh, but yeah, this place is definitely full of a lot of music history, and I'm loving that the building still stands here. And I actually do like the, the facade of this building. It's always just been really cool. I don't know. There's something about it with the the doors there in the front. It's just it's just definitely always been a a great great relic of Portland. Another really cool piece of history right here on Ninth and Ash. On this side of the building is where Kurt Cobain and Nirvana would have entered the building in February of 1990 to perform a show here six months previous to their Nevermind album. They actually recorded and performed some songs off of the Bleach album. And fast forward to 2019, Sub Pop, the record label that was involved with Nirvana, re-released the Bleach album and actually record or included the Molly's Lips recording that was at the show right here in February of 1990. So like I said, just a ton of musical history and cool things that have happened out of this building over the years. Um, Smashing Pumpkins performed here. There's just been a ton of, um, at the time, I wouldn't say they were such big name bands. They were definitely well known. 
Um, but, you know, these were some of the smaller venues that they would perform before they would go off to, you know, sell out stadiums and, and arenas and whatnot. But right here holds a little piece of recording history. And in fact, if you listen to the, like I said, the 2019 re-release of Bleach, you can hear Kurt's epic performance. I think um, Chris willed him out um, on stage. I, I believe I read an article that said he was in like a like a doctor's, uh, or like a patient gown, and then they performed the song, and then Kurt kind of changed up the song a little bit as they were performing, but apparently it's one of the best Nirvana performances, and I know this building had a lot of really good acoustics, and fast forward to the year 2000, Portland's very own uh, punk slash grunge band Everclear being from here in Portland, had performed here many of occasions. And in fact, they used this exact location, the inside uh, concert arena, or, you know, concert stage and, and uh, everything like that for a music video, which I will enter some of the shots here, but it's kind of harder to tell unless you've actually been to the venue that it is um, recorded here. But definitely a couple little cool pieces of music history right here. Another little cool piece of history is the building is no longer the Luna Theater, um, but the new proprietors actually named it and kept the name La Luna. It's now a restaurant. So what's really cool too, like I said, is that they kept the name La Luna here all these years later and in fact turned the uh, right side of the actual venue into a little cafe here. Now they are closed. Um, but I'm going to dip the camera in here and just if we can get a little peek of what the inside facades looks like. And to me, I thought it was so cool because I recognized the floorboards automatically just from coming here um, from so many shows is that that hardwood floor um, is basically the same floorage as that they used in the, in the venue all those years later. And if you can see now, it's just kind of like a a little restaurant cafe but they did a great job of keeping the the name I just love the fact that they kept the name and then another little relic that I noticed here was this old open sign which I believe was above the main entrance at one point or even in the bar area I, I, I vaguely vaguely remember seeing this I believe it was right above these main doors here um, but I love the fact that they hang on to some of this some of these old-school relics it makes it so cool love it now this is really awesome right here directly off the side of the the building next to the little parking structure you can see La Luna Cafe and what I thought was really cool is they actually not only kept the name La Luna, but the font that they used for the, you know, the law and the cafe is all that cursive style writing like you would have seen back in the day if you would have came to one of the shows here. Gosh, just standing here brings back so many memories of driving down here in the big Cadillac, about maybe five or six of us. We'd sit right here on the curb and wait for our favorite show or we would park across the street there all this was still uh parking back in the day so it made it easy we could just walk right over and hang out in front of the venue sometimes we'd hang out for like an hour or so even before the show yep definitely a lot of good shows here a lot of good bands and we would go right through these doors and mainly we wouldn't sit we would we would hang out right in front here or we would just hang out in front of the stage. We'd be basically deaf by the end of the show, but we didn't care. We had a great time. And back then you could see like four or five bands for, you know, four or five bucks. Gosh, this brings back so many memories. So as I'm standing here on the opposite side, I'm noticing that basically the facade has not changed at all. All the windows and everything, the doors are all in the same spot. These windows right here the five set with the little checkers above them you would have seen the big la luna sign all lit up i think it was like blue and pink i'm going to see if i can find some shots of it and insert it here but i remember parking under it a couple times and it would light up the whole car with the neon 
pretty cool. Little placard here too. Portland Gay Liberation's first meeting. Here on March 10th, 1970, the Portland Gay Liberation Front held its first meeting. This meeting launched the gay and lesbian movement in Oregon. The front brought the spirit of the Stonewall Uprising to Oregon, awaking homosexuals to their own social and legal persecution. Oh, interesting, never knew that. So definitely a lot more about this historical building than I thought. It looks like this building was once a church too. From 1866 to 1927, the Centenary Wilbur Church. Never knew that either. Look at this weird old call box here. Looks like it's been here for a long time. Not sure if this has been here since the show, but who knows, maybe this is one of the boxes that they use to enter some of the bands on a different uh, different uh, opening to the venue, who knows. But definitely a lot of good time sitting right here waiting for these shows to open. <laughs> I think that is so cool too that the cafe kept the name La Luna, that is so great. A lot of great memories here. I hope you guys chime in and leave some of your memories if you guys remember going to this particular venue, whether it be Pine Street or La Luna. Hands down, probably one of the most historic places for music here in Portland. There's a lot of venues here over the years. Um, a lot of famous bands have toured, but this one in particular gives me the most fondest memories just because I saw some of the best bands here and had some of the funnest times just being crazy. Um, you know, being a punk rocker <laughs> back in the day. But make sure you guys comment and let me know if you guys have any fond memories from Pine Street or La Luna, however you remember it. To me, this will always be such a great part of Portland's history. I always thought these were interesting. Check out this, one of these telephone poles. They're pretty much all like this up and down these blocks from all the old flyers throughout the years. Look at this, like, you can see there's just been a ton of flyers throughout the years placed on all these poles. And if you dug under these, you could probably find some really old school ones. Uh, but all the telephone poles throughout the years here have just been covered in flyers because of the shows being booked right down there. You can see this one's uh, pretty thick, full of the old school flyers. Well, I'm going to insert some of the flyers that you may have seen back in the day as well here. Um, but pretty much all these telephone poles around here are just covered in these old school flyers. Just another little... A little tidbit of music history. <laughs> a little record art here. It's pretty cool. And these cool cats here that work for uh, the city. And I recognize this cat actually. You went to a lot of the shows there, didn't you, bro? Yeah, I actually had forgot about it until you walked by and asked. And, uh, I, I work out here every day and ride past it every day and until you mentioned it and jogged my memory I had to actually when you walked over and was looking at it I followed kind of behind you and had to take a double look at it to see what it had looked like that's now, so you cool know? right so, yeah a lot it, of good shows there bro yeah, voodoo it, glow skulls I mean yeah. blink 182 back in the day before they even went big everybody everybody used to go there I think bad so. religion played there yeah did, what shows did you remember uh, Man, I can't remember. It was so bad. I used to be so bad on uh, <laughs> Sorry to say, pretty bad on drugs. Well, back the punk then. rock scene, that was yeah. Portland, dude. Yeah. And, we all, uh, if anybody's still around these days, we survived it. Yeah, I used to go there and then uh, also to uh, the Tonic. Oh, the Tonic. Uh, remember Satyricon, too? too? Yeah. So That's where uh, Courtney Love met Kurt. Yeah. They, and then uh, he, he did a show here in 1990, and when they re, -re released Sub Pop, which was the company that yeah. signed Nirvana. They re-released the Bleach album, 
and they put his performance at this show on that oh, album. Wow. Nice. So a lot of history yeah. there. But yeah. thanks again for yeah, directing no me problem, in the right man. way, bro. Yeah. I thought I recognized. Yeah, I was like, I know this guy, dude. It's That's tight. Cool whenever you said that, like I said, I've kind of followed behind you. Heck yeah. Take, take a double look at it, you know. Good so memories, dude. It's changed a little bit since back then. Heck you know? yeah. Well, thanks for sharing, dude. And I appreciate you not sending me on a wild goose chase. Yeah, yeah, no All problem. right, peace out, guys. Have a good day. Staying with the program and the music scene. <laughs> Nice. Check this out, you guys. If you look closely at the top of this building here, Doc Martens, that's right. Some old school punk rocker boots. I remember rocking those many of times. Now with bouncing soles. <laughs> How appropriate for the vlog and not too far from the venue pretty cool all right our next stop brings us here to southeast hawthorne we are at another state of mind this is basically the heart of southeast portland and these guys have been around for years they actually used to be right off of burnside but these guys are highly into the punk rock scene punk is not dead here in portland by any means we're going to see if we can go in here and maybe capture some some of their goodies. I know they got some old punk rock stuff. You can see some of the stuff in the windows as well. But we're gonna go in here and check out another state of mind. They've been uh, pretty heavy in the punk rock scene here for many years, so let's check it out. So check this out, you guys. Unfortunately, I was unable to do any filming in the shop. The owners weren't in and the person working wasn't quite sure if they were okay with it so maybe next time we can actually go inside and check it out the store is full of old school punk rock and some newer items as well but I picked up this Operation Ivy sticker which was actually one of my favorite you know ska slash punk bands and I'm gonna give it away whoever comments first with their favorite band doesn't necessarily even have to be punk rock or anything I will give you this sticker now if you're not familiar with Op Ivy um, they were like a ska punk band in the 80s and 90s and uh, definitely uh, one of my favorites. So if you don't want the sticker and you just want to comment, you can say, you know, I'm not not really hep on the sticker. But if you do want the sticker, make sure you leave a comment of your favorite punk rock band or band and then let me know you do want the sticker. That way uh, the first person that chimes in, I'll go ahead and send this to you. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today. I love you guys very much for always creeping with. Make sure you guys give it a thumbs up if you did, did enjoy this vlog. A lot of good old school Portland memories. But that's going to do it. Love you guys. Creeper out for now. Peace.